Today we're, uh, we're going to diagnose uh, some high crankcase pressure issues in a uh, Cummins X15, ISX15. Basically the same, uh, same engine for the most part, a little bit of differences, but for, for purposes here we're going to say X15 and ISX15s. So we're going to show you go through the steps here of different things to look at and finally we'll narrow down. I've already, I've already troubleshooted it, so I already know what the problem is, but I'm going to take you through the steps that I went through and at the end uh, we're going to show you what the problem actually was. All right, hi guys, Ryan back again. So as we said in the beginning, diagnosing high crankcase pressure in a Cummins X15 slash ISX15. Several different things that can be at play here. When the truck first came in, actually originally this truck came in, had some coolant leaks and stuff like that. We fixed all that and uh, kind of to heat the engine up and to check for more coolant leaks, I use Cummins Insight and do a, a DPF slash engine uh, analysis. Like I said, it does a regen and it kind of checks everything that's going on with the engine and the emission system at the same time. And plus it heats the engine up really quick. So it's good for checking for coolant leaks as well. So when I was doing that, before this problem came in, I noticed the the ash load on the, uh, the DPF filter was like 50% or so, which isn't terrible, but usually around 50% or more, I like to clean them. It wasn't a terrible thing. So the customer took it, ran it for a couple of weeks and then um, changed the oil and uh, put kind of a high detergent oil in it. Um, I think I think it was Schaefer's is one of the ones he used. So there's a lot of different ones out there and uh, I'm not knocking their product or anything, um, but it is a real high detergent uh, synthetic oil, cleans really well. This truck had like 350,000 miles on it. Um, so I don't know what had been ran in it before, but one thing I would recommend, uh, use caution when you're using those types of oils and something that you don't know what's been ran in it before, how much carbon soot build up and all that's in it because it could all come out at once. So this truck started acting up. It was coming up with a uh, engine shut down for high crankcase pressure and at the same time, it was saying the DPF filter was full. So he brought it back down to me. I went through it, I started running a region and it immediately wanted to shut down because the crankcase pressure was so high. And at the same time, I was seeing the ash load on the DPF was like at 72%. So like in the course of three weeks, it had jumped over 20%, which it was, you know, basically at full. I mean, once you get, once you get over 70, I mean, you're, you're pretty well need to have them cleaned or replaced or something. So we cleaned the filter because that's what I was thinking. Well, first thing I did, I'll show you here. There is a crankcase pressure sensor and a crankcase filter. So these, these are supposed to be non-serviceable, I guess you say, or not need to be serviced. I know the older ISXs, they have the big cartridge. We've done videos on those before with changing that crankcase filter element. They can plug up. These ones here, like I said, they're supposed to, they're really, they're almost $350 to replace this. So according to Cummins, they're supposed to be, you know, lifetime product. I mean, stuff can still happen. So first thing I did, I replaced this and I replaced the uh, crankcase pressure sensor, which is up here. All right, so crankcase pressure sensor is right here on this tube. These, I think I pay like $65, $70 for these. So it's a, a cheap way. I would just replace it for that kind of money just to make sure you're getting the correct reading. Check all the wiring to this. And then, like I said, I, I don't like changing these filters, but I'd rather just to make sure everything's right out here before we proceed any further. So we went ahead and changed those. So we had uh, replaced the sensor, replaced the filter, and then um, we took the DPF out. It had a, li a real high, fine ash like film on it. I mean, I, something like I've never seen before. So it seems like that oil just cleaned everything out and put it all through the system like all at once and plugged it up, like I said, like 20%. So we had that cleaned, got it back down to green tag level, put everything back together. I regened it, actually, I regened it once with Insight let it sit overnight, and then I regened it again with OTR in the morning. Side note, I mean, we work with OTR. I believe in their product. It's real easy to use on your cell phone and all that. So we're partnered with them. We got a discount code as well. So if you're interested in buying one of their products, you can check that out below. Anyways, so we cleaned the DPF, regened it twice. Like I said, once with Insight, once with OTR, everything, no codes, no flashing lights. I was, as I was watching the real-time data when I was using Insight, our uh, crankcase pressure dropped down by about 30, 40% of what it was when it came in, which it was still pretty high. So the customer took it, ran in a couple loads, and then it started again. So I'm like, I'm, I was kind of worried. I didn't want to think, I didn't want to say it out loud, but I was like, okay, it may have just plugged that filter up again, you know, when that continual cleaning process. So I ended up bringing it back down to me. We went ahead and took the DPF off, took the DOC off, and just ran the engine with just the exhaust pipe, down pipe off of the turbo and ran all the same tests and didn't have any difference on that pressure. So after that point, 
we got to start looking at other things. High crankcase pressure can be caused by basically three other things. Next thing we checked was your air compressor because if your air compressor, it could be pushing air into your crankcase. If your rings or something or something's damaged inside there, it can actually blow by the little pistons because it's just like a little engine. You can have blow by from that pressurizing the crankcase as well. So we isolated that. The way we did that, we unhooked all the air lines to this and actually put air to where the governor put, you know, 900 pounds of shop air to where the uh, governor comes in from the air dryer to basically shut that air compressor off. So did that, check crankcase pressure, no change. Next thing is going to be your turbo because if you have one of your seals blown inside your turbo, you may not know it from the outside, but it could be blowing boost into the crankcase through the oil return line on the bottom of the turbo. So it could be pressurizing your crankcase. So check that and didn't notice any change with that as well. So last thing, which is, is a very simple check, but I didn't want to do it because I didn't want to see the results, was we used Cummins Insight, which I'm going to show you. We're going to start the truck up and I'm going to do this test again and show you guys in real time what it looks like and the, and the, the results and the data that come from that. But we'll do a cutout test, which we shut off each cylinder. So basically it's not going to be injecting fuel and it's going to basically shut off that power stroke when you're really getting that a lot of compression and see at the same time as you're cutting the cylinders out, you're going to look at that real time data, inches of mercury on your crankcase pressure and see if there's any variation between the cylinders. So we're going to do that and we'll show you what happens. What we're going to do is we're going to cut out each cylinder and at the same time as we cut them out we're going to go back and look at the the crankcase pressure then see if there's any difference between once we cut each cylinder out well, like i said we'll highlight the data then after we're done and it's quiet again we'll follow back up test and we we're watching that crankcase pressure and in inches of mercury and as you see we went through one through five and there was no change when we got the six we saw those numbers dropping from you know two 2.2 down into 1.5s so we know something's wrong with cylinder number six back there so unfortunately i don't like doing this test because i don't really it, it, it's a very costly going after this is a very costly you know, endeavor. I mean, basically I, we was looking at quotes. I mean, just to take the head off, drop cylinder six and possibly just repair cylinder six. I mean, we're looking at like close to $6,000. Now to go through and do the whole complete overhaul. And we said it's up to the customer what you want to do and all that. You know, we're upwards of like $16,000 on something like that. So like I said, an issue like that can get really costly. I didn't say it before, but most likely what I think happened that this engine had some carbon packing that high detergent oil was put in it and probably a compression ring broke loose in number six and it could have broke it, rolled it, and that's why you're getting, when that cylinder six, when it's firing, you're getting that excess blow by. So that's why you see that change is because when we shut that cylinder off, you're not getting that, that power stroke, that explosion in the cylinder. So it's, it takes away some of the excess. You're still gonna have some just because that cylinder's still moving up and down and, and pushing air. But without that explosion in the cylinder, it drops that crankcase pressure when we shut that cylinder off. So that's most likely what's wrong with it. But the only way to 100% know is to pull the head, pull the pan, and pull the rod and piston out of it, unfortunately. So guys, those are pretty much the things you need to look at if you're having high crankcase pressure. I usually start with the simplest thing first, you know, then starting with, you know, filter, 
sensor, and kind of go down the line from there. I mean, it isn't that hard to use Insight uh, to, do, to, to do a cutout test and get those numbers as well. So, I mean, you could even start there if you wanted to. And like I said, I was just kind of keeping my fingers crossed, hoping it wasn't that problem on, for the customer's sake. But unfortunately, things play out that way sometimes. So, if you have any issues, there's a couple tips for you in the video. So, I hope that helps you out. Thanks again for watching, guys. Thanks for all the support. Thumbs up and uh, like the video as always. So, and subscribe if you haven't already.